let's pray. Father, we come before you and we specifically pray for Gail, Lord, as she's traveling this weekend. Lord, we pray that you go with her and bless her journey, Lord. Lord, when she goes back, Lord, we know for sure that you will be with her, Lord. And also we pray for that small art studio, Lord. May it a place of joy and a comfort and a place of your presence, Lord. May, Lord, some of the people who walk through there find you and your, your love and, your ho and, and hope in you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. We thank you for Gail. And, Lord, especially we praise you for the healing you have given her last year. Lord, we pray that uh, she will continue in that. And, Lord, I pray that you will strengthen her body and mind and spirit, Lord, so that she can be a blessing to many people, Lord, who are going through different troubles and, and trials, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. So today uh, my topic is how not to give. Uh, I want to ask you, have you ever had a someone title like this? How not to give? Maybe not, because, uh, because uh, normally people will find it uh, difficult to preach because the churches has a lot of financial obligation and a lot of fundraising concern. It's not normal that uh, somebody will come and preach, okay, don't give like this. So, but I think um, by God's grace we can do that today. And it is based on a sermon by R. Stanley, who is an Indian man. Um, around three generations back, some missionaries went to his village in South India, and all of the village came to Christ, and, uh, including his grandmother. So she was a very praying lady, and uh, her mother and father were very strict uh, parents. Uh, and, uh, and his mother uh, named him after Stanley Jones, who was a very famous British preacher. And he has written so many books. And uh, so that's how he got the name, R. Stanley. So, he, and he's a very faithful man. And Susan and me, even before marriage, we used to read his books. It was very simple, but very straight. So in his home, when he was a child, his mother won't give the breakfast unless he by heart was every day before breakfast. And also on Sunday, he must buy her one Sam before he gets a breakfast. So, uh, so and it had an impact. And, uh, and uh, when he was in college, God touched his life. He started a youth ministry. And uh, finally, he did his master's in structural engineering from IIT, which is the most competitive institute in India. So getting into IIT is like more difficult than getting into Harvard. Maybe 10 times more difficult than getting into Harvard. So, uh, and he studied there and then he started working as a college teacher and he started working among the youth and also then he joined uh, one of the mission hospitals in India uh, as, as an administrator and then the Lord called him for full time ministry. And I, I was watching his life, he's now more than 70 now. So by the time he left that organization, it has grown into 250 churches and um, and every month, every year, they used to publish all their accounts open. And after this building up these 250 churches, he left everything for somebody else. And now he's only focused on studying the word and teaching the word. So I have seen a great example in him about the openness. And he spoke this message, and I am copying it. Uh, but he has allowed it to copy openly. So. Um, and uh, this week in BBC, there was an article. <laughs> Uh, the title is The Preachers Getting Rich from Poor Americans. You can go to Google, uh, BBC and see it was come in this article. It's talking about a man who was giving to some big, uh, big uh, preachers and he became very poor. And uh, later on his daughter got sick and he wrote back to this preacher saying, okay, please help me, now I don't have anything. I, I even lost my home. And then the preacher, uh, the big uh, guy, he said, no, we cannot give you anything because there are so many people asking like that and we can't give. So then there is some organization in, uh, in Dallas who is tracking all this and he's talking to them. Okay, it's all a story. But I want to say this man has lost everything. He has, um, um, he has lost everything and there is no way he can get it back. So when we give, when we do, when we give incorrectly, we have triple loss. One, you lose your money Second, you lose your reward in heaven. Third, you, the, the genuine needs are not getting supported. So that's why this topic is very important that we give and we give right. So let's avoid the triple loss. And let's read in Psalm 119 verse 18, it says, Open my eyes that I may see wondrous things from your law. So today we are going to look through the New Testament and see some of the principles which say how not to give. 
And uh, last week, John has spoken about the kingdom of God. And when he finished, he, um, he, re he in the slide, it was like this. It said, prepare yourself. And then he has given a few points, of course, which we won't like it. The first point is, obey the Lord. Second is, know his son. Third is, grow in Christ-likeness and leave out your fruit. Love your wives. Peter doesn't have to do that. <laughs> Work well and be faithful. And uh, yeah, so today, the, maybe I am taking one of that and a little bit expanding that. I, I will say giving is a part of growing in Christ-likeness. I'll come to that later. So, uh, in, when Jesus starts teaching, you, so you see in the Sermon on the Mount, uh, first he will say how not to do a thing, and then he will explain how to do a thing. So, when Jesus taught in Matthew 5, 6, 7, he first taught about prayer. He said, okay, you don't do like this, but do like this. Uh, and about almsgiving, Jesus taught, give, don't do like this and give like this. So, in, about fasting, uh, he said, don't do like this, but do like this. And so it's the not to is something which comes from Jesus. And if you see the God's commandments, 10 commandments, eight out of 10 are not, you shall not do this. It says like this. You know, because we love sin, we can be manipulated. There are, if there are brilliant people who can manipulate us, and if we, if we love sin, there is a pleasure for the sin. So even in giving, there is a pleasure if there are some people who can manipulate us, they can make you give. And there are so many techniques, and even in India, people use that. So Susan and Timothy went for a meeting in India, and there the, the preacher was doing all this, and Timothy said uh, he's selling the gospel. So it's, it's, if you, it is easy to, if you know the scripture, it is easy to understand, but if you don't know the scripture, you will lose like the man who was in the BBC article. Hatred has a pleasure, you know, Hated as a pleasure, and there are people who can manipulate hatredness and make you do things. And in India, many are doing that. <laughs> giving also has a pleasure, especially wrong giving. So just be careful. I am not saying that you shouldn't give, but let us give with a proper attitude and scripturally. So the first principle is that do not separate life from giving. So. Uh, People, uh, preachers normally won't say this because uh, they may lose some of the revenue. But when Jesus was speaking, he, he offended the rich many times. He told them up straight, if you are rich, it is going to be difficult and you need God. You know, any, any teaching from the scripture, when you receive it as a law, it is a burden. But when we go to Jesus and ask Jesus to teach us, and, and then it becomes a joy and a, and a life to you. So uh, I know this teaching can, be, be, can feel like a law, but I pray that it won't be. Um, let's, let's pray. Lord, I, I come before you, Lord. Lord, I know that your word can act as a law, but Lord, today I pray that you will become life and spirit, Lord. Lord, your word becomes beautiful when you are with us and when we do it together with you, Lord. We, don't, we cannot do without you, but we can do with you, Lord. Be with us in Jesus' name. In Jeremiah 6, 19 to 20, we read, if you are not ready to obey me, your gift is not acceptable. In Jeremiah, people were bringing very expensive gifts. They say they're bringing frankincense and some special things to God. And God said, no, if you are not going to obey me, I am not going to accept this. And we, and we know that about Samuel uh, uh, and Saul. Saul. When Samuel told uh, Saul to destroy everything the Amalekites has, he kept some sheep and he told Samuel a good excuse. He said, I am bringing it to God. And, some, and God, Samuel is saying, it's better to obey than sacrifice. God is interested in you than yours. We should not forget this principle. God is interested in you than yours. And Paul is in 2 Corinthians, he's writing, I do not seek yours, but you. First, uh, in 2 Corinthians 8, 5, he's talking about the Macedonian Christians. Paul is telling about them. These Christians, they were forcing Paul to accept. The Paul was not forcing them to give. These Christians were forcing uh, Paul to accept more. And, uh, and then Paul is writing about them. First, they give to the Lord and then to us. So, important thing is we give our life to the Lord. 
And uh, in Matthew 5, 23, 24, and Matthew 18, 15, uh, it is talking about uh, when you are going to bring a gift to God, if you have something against the brother, or if you are offended, still you have to go and get right with the Lord and then bring the sacrifice. So basically the first principle is do not separate life from giving. But if you, if you, do, if you are not living before the Lord, it's better not to give. Be, be, so what am I saying? Am I saying that you should be perfect before giving? No, I'm not saying that. I'm saying that you bring yourself and examine your life and whatever you see wrong, go to God and ask forgiveness and be cleansed in his blood and then bring the offering. Second is, do not end by ungodly means. So maybe in Korea it is difficult to end by ungodly means, but in many other society it is easy. Uh, the society is corrupt. We are tempted to end something uh, in somehow, but let us not do that. And God is not pleased when we bring offering after we end by ungodly means. So in India, even during the tsunami, many Christian pastors became rich because they received a lot of funds from so many people and they didn't give it to the people who are in need. <coughs> and God is not honored. And in Proverbs 11, 11, 1, it says, false balance is an abomination to the Lord. A just weight is his delight. So God hates false balance. False businesses, God hates. And bribery, God hates. Partnership with corrupt men, God hates. And if you are partnered with somebody who is doing corrupt practices, God doesn't like that. And he is not pleased with your offering when you do that. Delayed payment of wages and injustice to the, to the poor, God doesn't like. And he will ask us to correct before we bring an offering to the Lord. I know you don't gamble and you don't participate in liquor business, but God doesn't like questionable businesses. God wants us to work on them and make money slowly rather than make quick money. And also, God doesn't like when we work too much that we don't have time for God and family, and God doesn't like. And, and in Proverbs 23, 4 to 5, it says, riches is nothing, it will fly away like an eagle. So don't set your mind on that. Do not cheat the government. It is very easy to do in India, but not here. Maybe. <laughs> so... Uh, many systems are built like that, but let us, let us not cheat the government. Let us pay the tax. The Bible says we should submit to government. The Bible says we should honor the authorities. So when you give the tax, joy with joy, give with joy. So Jesus said about uh, uh, Caesar, he said, whose inscription is it? And then the people said, Caesar's, give to Caesar what is Caesar's and give to God what is God's. So God is not pleased when you take Caesar's and give to God. No. And this is very important. Do not make cheap offering. So in Malachi, God is saying, I am a great king. If you, if you bring an offering, which is cheap, uh, is it not evil? He's asking it is evil. And, and uh, in Malachi, it is also saying God is cursing them. That because you do like that, it will be cursed. So in, in Malachi, the people were, what they were doing is they, were, they had a sheep. So whoever, whatever was blind and sick, they were bringing to God and keeping the good ones. So please don't do that. Don't bring a chief offering to the Lord. He, and uh, when Queen Elizabeth visited India, uh, many people, when she visited, she many visited many places in India, nobody has to give her a gift, but people gave expensive gift to her just because she's a queen. And we are sure she's not going to wear any of that, but still because she's a queen, people gave. So when you come to God, give the best gift. Don't give the cheap offering. So in 2 Samuel 24, 24, we read about David. He, he was counting the Israel and he sinned. So God said, okay, you bring an offering and I will forgive you. And then he went to a, a purchase a land. And um, then the owner said, so you can take it for free. David said, no, I'm going to pay you full. And then I will make the offering. So it is more about the proportion rather than the amount. You know, Jesus was a little humorous. One day everybody was putting offering and Jesus was watching everybody. So it was not good, right? If you, if you are putting offering and I am watching everybody how much you are putting. <laughs> but Jesus was doing something like that. And he, he, and he commented to the disciples, you see that widow? She has put in more than 
everybody. Maybe you have not heard about C.T. Stead. He was a uh, British cricketer who had owned a lot of family wealth. But he sold everything and he went to missionary as China and Africa. And, but just before his marriage, he kept a small portion for his wife, uh, for his future wife, fiancé. And she told him, see, you are given almost everything. Give that also and let us trust and let us start new. And, and he lived a wonderful life. And maybe in the YouTube you can see some of his uh, videos about his life. Until our purse is converted, we are not converted. So when we come to God, bring, do not bring a cheap offering. You are giving to the king of kings. And do not yield to pressures. So in India, there was a widow who was a rich widow. She was going to die. And she was not a committed Christian. But she said, I want to die in peace. So she called two, two God's servants, God, two priests. And uh, the priest uh, told her a suggestion um, to get peace. He told her, have you written a will? They said, she said, no. Then you write a will, give me 50% to me and 50% to the other priest, and then you will have peace. So this widow, this poor widow, she wrote the will and gave everything. And after that, the, the priest asked, how do you feel now? She said, I, now I feel like I am crucified between two thieves. <laughs> <laughs> so, so do not yield to pressures. And, uh, uh, and there are people who may make you feel pressure about any ministry. No, don't, don't give because you feel pressure. Just bring it to the Lord. And you and the Lord, the Lord decide what you should do about it. And there is nothing wrong with presenting the need but not pressure. Say, like, if we have to give to Ekogwan, we can say, okay, this is the need. This is what they are doing. But don't put pressure and so much. And it is not scriptural. So in Philippians, Paul is writing in 4, chapter 4, Not that I seek the gift, but I seek the fruit that abounds to your account. Paul is saying, don't give to me because uh, I, I want it, but I want you, you to be blessed. So please give for that. Do not support questionable ministries. So there are many ministries, but it is our responsibility to check. I have a few friends who will always say, God says to give, so I give. I don't care what they are doing. I think it's much better to have a look and see what they are doing and then do. So in every place, uh, in, in India, earlier movies was making a lot of money. And then it was politics. Even in religion, now people make a lot of money. So just be careful. In 1 Timothy 6, 5, it says, Godliness is gain. And then it says, Paul is instructing Timothy, when people are making money after that, Paul's instruction was, withdraw from such men. Withdraw yourselves. So you imagine, in the time when the first apostle, Paul, Peter, everybody was writing, still there were people who were making money out of Christianity, even in the time when they were persecuted. So don't be surprised, even now, when people do that. So there are three, four types of ministers we should be careful. One is material-minded preachers who preach on, on the cross, on the Christ, but they will not preach on the cross of Christ. Means they won't say, teach about self-denial, they won't say about suffering a loss, giving yourself. They will, not, they will only talk about Christ and blessings and make your heart focus towards that and just get away from those men. You don't have to judge everybody and say, okay, that guy is very bad or something. But when you see something like this, I will say, just withdraw. Don't, do, don't have anything to do with that. And ministers with no accountability. In 2 Corinthians, Paul is writing, when you do the finances, you should do good in the sight of God and also in the sight of men. Say, if from secular world, somebody comes and audit our church, we should be able to stand. Okay, this is what we have done, and this is open, and there should be accountability. So any ministry which is not accountable, which is not open about accounts, I'll say, stay away. Ministers with wrong doctrines. We don't have time to do that. In Second John, John is telling, don't even allow them to enter your home. So it's, that's, that's what the apostles taught. Ministers, though, who build their own empire. See, Jesus taught, it is better to give than to receive. So if the minister who is doing ministry is amazing, making a private plane, making a big home, do he, does he believe that? If he believed Jesus' teaching, he would have given more than he would have kept. So when somebody is building their own empire, just stay away. John Wesley said, when I die, if I leave more than 10 pounds, you and all mankind can say that 
I died as a thief and a robber. So that, that is how good servants of the Lord has done. And, and I will say, give to Paul, who, who plants, who go out and plant churches as missionaries, and give to Apollos, who waters as pastors, but don't spoil any preachers. Just give what is needed, what is guided by the Lord, and with a good heart. Do not give to influence preachers. If you see Acts, when Paul is asking to take a collection, he told them, when I come, I don't want to take collection. So you, you take all the collection when I am not there, so that I won't be impressed by what you are giving, and, uh, and they will do it in a good way. And in Acts 8.20, uh, Acts 8.20, uh, Peter is saying, you, your money perish with you. Somebody was trying to give him money, and uh, I think Simon, he was trying to give money and take the gift of giving the Holy Spirit, and Peter said, no, your money perish with you. Sorry, it was Paul. And in 2 Kings 5, 25, 27, we know about Gehazi. He went back after Naaman and collected some gift, and God judged him, and his family had leprosy ever since. And God judges wrong motives, giving and receiving. So both we should be responsible. And it is tempting to give to big preachers, and, uh, and, uh, and it, is, it is good to, uh, and maybe not in our church, maybe in some other churches, it is always there will be a temptation to go and give personally big gift and get noticed. Don't, don't give into that. Daniel, he accepted the gift from Nebuchadnezzar, but he didn't accept from his son, Belshazzar, because he was trying to influence Daniel. Daniel told Belshazzar, no, I don't want your gift. But when Nebuchadnezzar gave it as a part of gratitude, he accepted it. And, and sometime in India we have seen, the, they will say, okay, give the seed money, or they will say, okay, give a TV program, we'll pray for you, and they will, they will, they will call in the friend of the church, and they will announce big things, um, and don't do, don't do that. Don't, do, don't, influence, don't try to influence preachers. And in, in the New Testament, everybody is a priest. Everybody can pray as effectively as any servant of God. So learn for yourself to pray and pray for one another. So the, priest, the preacher should pray for the others and the others should pray for the priest. So we need prayer both, both ways. So somebody who says, oh, I pray by faith, I can go supernatural. No, it is not scriptural. The, if you are a true servant of God, you will teach people to pray and, and they will get answers. Actually, this, when I studied, I was surprised. It, Bible says, actually, helping the poor is equally or even of greater importance than helping the missionaries or giving the church. If you teach Jesus' own teachings, there is nothing about giving to the church or mission work. It is more about giving to the poor. Jesus taught only that, and when we come to Acts and other apostles, they taught to give to the church also. So in Matthew 23, 23 we see, Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for you pay tithes of mint and anise and cumin, and have neglected the weightier matters of the law justice and mercy and faith. This you ought to have done without leaving the others undone. So this is saying justice and mercy and faith. Justice and mercy and faith to whom? It's only to the poor. You can't give justice to God. It is, it is, Jesus was definitely saying, no, no, no. Giving the tithe is not enough. The first is give, show to justice. In Isaiah 117, it says, learn to do good, seek justice, rebuke the oppressor, defend the fatherless, plead for the widow. Come now and let us reason together, says the Lord. Though your sins are like scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. Though they are red like crimson, they shall be as wool. So when Isaiah, when he was teaching, basically he's talking about sin which is like scarlet. What was the sin? Maybe not the thing which we think. It was, it was about injustice. The verse behind was, it is about injustice. And then, then Jesus said, give alms. Give to the poor, invite the poor when you are having a dinner. So in Jesus' teaching, always the poor has a higher or same level as giving to missionaries. We know about the rich man, a rich man who went to hell and what he has what was his sin? His sin his only sin which the Bible records is he didn't care about the Lazarus. So in Acts 6, we see that the church took care of the poor and fatherless and widows. And in James 1.27 it says, pure religion has two sides. One is helping the poor and keep yourself pure. 
So when we do the church budget, in last year, we gave more to the poor rather than to the missions. We gave roughly maybe 60% of our giving went to the poor and the orphans, and maybe 40% went to the mission work in North Korea and other things. And do not publicize your giving. We know we might have fallen, I have fallen in this few times. So just let us be careful that we shouldn't be publicizing our giving. So when Jesus taught about giving, the first thing he taught is, this, this is the thing, first thing he taught. Very first teaching of Christ was against publicizing giving. Not in the church, not in the society, not within yourself, not get puffed up. So in India, you know, you, maybe you, some of you remember King Slim. He went to his place in local church, and he saw that the names were written on the tube light, who has given the tube light, and names were written on the bench, <laughs> that who has given the bench. It is some old system, but one of his preaching was like, oh, don't do this. So just uh, let us not do that. And you know, men like to be appreciated and to get recognition, but maybe Christ-likeness is going behind the scene. And Ananias and Sapphira, we know, they lusted for lack of recognition and they perished. And why we shouldn't worry about publishing our gift? There is only one reason. God said, when you give a glass of water, I, take, I keep the account. So God will give you the, keep the account and he will honor you one day. So let us not worry about we getting recognized. And second reason that we shouldn't worry about publicizing, anyway, it is God's money. You have nothing to be proud of when you are giving. C.D. Sturt said, if Christ has died for me, no sacrifice I will make be too great. God hears our motives. So this is the last. Do not give just to receive. See, in the Old Testament, that there was a law of tithe, and I believe in the New Testament it is not there. And even in the New Old Testament, it was not a 10 percent. If you study Deuteronomy, the tithe will come 23 percent. And in the Old Testament, there was a promise that when you do that, God will bless it. And in the New Testament, it is not there. In the New Testament, the, the promise is God will give you righteousness, and He will meet your needs. Yes, a little bit changed. Is little the 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 promise has changed from material things to spiritual blessings. So when you give, don't expect that every time you will get. If you look at Paul's life, he had maybe he, had, he was a very rich man when he came to Christ. When he died, he had almost nothing. So if, if the Old Testament truth was true, it should have been true in Apostle's life. And also there are many faithful Christians in very persecuted countries, and it doesn't. So just don't, uh, the material blessing is not a promise of the New Testament. But meeting the needs and increasing in righteousness and an abundance for our needs is a promise. So when you give with the right attitude, you can expect God to work miracles in your life. But don't give with, uh, with an attitude that, OK, I give, so I should get. So you can't do that business with the Lord. God does not need our gift. In Psalm 50, he says, all the cattle on the hills, on the mountains are mine. What you can give me? In Acts 17, again, he's saying something similar to this. He created the whole world, and he doesn't need us. So then the next question is, then why, why do we have to give? I, I think the only reason is that God wants to give some of his character to us. He's a giver, and he, you know, Christ, he has given everything for us, and he's saying, I want you to have my image in you, so you give. So, um, so when you want Christ's image in you, you want to him and us, us start to give. In Philippians 4, 18, it says, it will be well-pleasing to the Lord. Old Testament norm was material blessing, but in the New Testament, the focus is entirely changed. It doesn't say you won't be materially blessed again, but it has given a totally new dimension. Just like Many laws in the Old Testament, Jesus changed and said, no, 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 in the New Testament, you don't even think. So something like that. In the Old Testament, okay, to us, the promise was you give and you will get. But in the New Testament, it is something more. You will, you will be rewarded. And it is better that we get reward in the kingdom of God. So in Acts 20, 35, it says it is better to give than receive. So any, any preacher, if he's making money out of me, say, in any culture, I believe the, the priest has a right to live in the same way as the congregation. But if the priest is living much higher than the, than the congregation, maybe we should 
stay away. The fact that God receives is more glorious than God rewards me. Just imagine, God, God the king of the, the whole universe, he says, when you give, I receive. It is, it, is, it is his humility and it is his glory. So, I want to summarize. Giving is so important, but avoid triple loss. When we give with the wrong attitude, you lose your money and you lose your reward. So, let us give with the right attitude. And try to hide your giving. And do not make cheap offering. And uh, we sometime back, uh, uh, Brad was preaching and he told an example about Magdi. And uh, the, he, the father purchased a Magdi burger and fries for the son. And the son said, I won't give you fries. So sometimes we are like, like that. And uh, whatever we have, it belongs to God. So let us give as an act of worship. Let poor remain very high on our list. Maybe you will receive nothing here when you give. So the reason why God is asking us to give is because he wants us to have his image in us. So let us, let us commit once again to, our, uh, uh, to the Lord and, and pray. Father, we come before you. Lord, Lord, we know we have fallen many times. And Lord, we, we know that, Lord, you promise us to lift us up every time we fall. And every time we come back to you, Lord, we come and Lord, we want, to, we want to give, but we want to give right, Lord. Lord, correct our attitudes and, and help us to get up and, and walk with you. And we trust you, Lord, in Jesus' precious name.